Hello, today I will be administering various tests, various procedures, and I'll be running them all on you. So I have an array of objects and items that I'm going to be using on you specifically. So your job today is to sit back, relax, listen up, and close your eyes. So let's start off with your heartbeat and your pressure, shall we? I have these items here, or this item, since it is one thing. I believe it's called a stethoscope. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not licensed. Okay. All I need you to do is just breathe in. That's all you have to do for me. And I'll listen to you. Doing a fantastic job. Breathe in and out. And one more time, breathe in and out. Thank you for that. Now I'll be checking your pressure with my pressure tool. Okay, it's time to wrap this around. It's okay. You don't have to worry about anything. Now I have the, you know, stuff to look at your pressure from here. Now that is wrapped around your arm, I'm going to be doing the pressuring. That is nice. Now, time to release the air or pressure. And I'll be doing it one more time just for safety, precaution, and to make sure I have everything settled. All right. Seems like everything is working just fine, working perfectly. So now let's move on to the good stuff, shall we? So I have a few objects here that I will be using and I need to know which ones are your preferred objects to use. Ah, okay. I have to write that down. So, how's your day going? Alrighty. I like the sound of that. Have you eaten today? No. Yes, a little bit? Okay. That's good. As long as you have something in your body, that's perfectly fine. What have you done today? Tell me about your day. Mm hmm Sounds very exhausting. I'm sure you'll have better days. Now, sorry to cut that short. be looking at all the different tools 
and objects I have. Here's buttons. These may be used for your eyes. Mm -hmm. Uno momento, I see a bug. You know, I don't really like bugs, so I'll make sure it's dead. Perfect. So let's move into the next to the next step, shall we? My apologies. Speech is getting a little wonky. It's very late and I'm very tired. So I have a bunch of hooks I may be using for you. Now I have something I want to share with you. I hope you don't mind though, by the way. It's a lot of interesting stuff that I'd like to share with you. So, I've, you know, I'm gonna be hooking things, hooking your mouth to the side, your eyes. So, while I get this situated, how about I share some interesting facts with you? So I need you to listen up because they are very, very interesting. And you can go on and tell someone about this. And they'll be like, mm, where did you learn this from? Just tell them the internet. So, number one. Nothing in the universe is stationary. It seems like it, right? You're looking around your room, nothing's moving. Well, that is not true. Well, you see, the moon and the earth are constantly orbiting. Within the common center of gravity, right? And then the sun will... They're also orbiting around the sun. But, and then the sun and all the other planets are orbiting within the galaxy. So, well, in the center of the galaxy, that is. So, since everything is in motion, and you're on the planet as well, you're also in motion. And what's very interesting is that... Hold on, let me get a hook. Okay, what's very interesting is that the Earth's orbit around the sun moving forward within space is the shape of a helix what is a helix you're asking or if you do know you can tell us in the comments below but basically a helix is a shape that is very similar to the diagram of a dna structure well you know when you look up dna and you get that spiral with the lines in the middle that looks like a spiral ladder that's a helix minus the lines so earth and the sun moving through the galaxy in the helix shape very interesting stuff right and if everything were to stop rotating and moving and actually be stationary well we'd probably all be launched within thousands of miles per hour. And we would not want that. So imagine everything stops the earth, right? You're just standing here. You'd be yeeted into the next wall and through it. So yeah. Now, upcoming with the next fact, since I'm going to be using a light to check on you, to check your nerves. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, 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 well. Amazing, 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 amazing. So, since we have this right here, something very interesting is that platypuses glow when they are under... Expo exposed to lights like these, UV lights. That's because they're biofluorescent. Something similar to scorpions or the, the bird parakeets. 
I don't know if any of you have parakeets. I used to own a few myself. Yes, biofluorescent. That is why there is glowing going on when it comes to the UV rays, such as this. Or UV lights, I guess you can say. Um, yeah, so that's very interesting. So all you're supposed to be doing is following along, by the way. Okay, now here's my next fact to you before I start to make an incision where I need to make it. Actually, I'll just start now. Dinosaurs existed on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, since you know you're aware that we're always orbiting within the galaxy, since it's been a couple million years since dinosaurs existed, do you believe we're in the same spot in the universe? No. They were on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy, and now we are here. So, yeah. Very interesting, right? Okay. I like that. Are you doing okay? It's not hurting, is it? Next interesting fact I have to you, I mean, have to share with you while I write down your diagnosis for this specific area I just worked on. The tongue of woodpeckers wrap around their brain to cushion it from all the profuse pecking they do. Did you know that? It's very interesting. So imagine a woodpecker and the beak right here. The tongue wraps all the way around the brain and it cushions it and then since it's also so very long they use that to snack the treats and bugs and whatever else they eat are these facts interesting to you okay so I need you to just follow along. Just follow the tip of the pencil. That's all you have to do. Checking your... Checking your eyesight. You're doing a good job, by the way. Thank you for participating. We're gonna go slowly down, slowly down, slowly down, slowly down, slowly down, slowly down, slowly down. And you've reached the bottom. Good job. It looks like your eyes are on the are on the right track. So next up, let me close this. I don't think I'd be needing this for the time being. So let's make sure we close that up. Now you want to know something very interesting that you can do with the water. Well, if you have the resources and the tools, you can boil water without heat. How do you do this? Well, if you take room temperature water and you put it into a vacuum chamber. These are nails for you, by the way. If you put it into a vacuum chamber and you start removing the air from the chamber, the pressure is what's going to cause the water to boil. And since it's at a low temperature, you can put your hand in the boiling water and you will be unaffected by it. It won't hurt because it's boiling without heat.
So, the next step. Oh, I dropped one. So, did you know that when frogs are eating food, and when frogs swallow and their eyes roll, like, into their head, like it sinks into their head, the frog's eyeballs are actually rolling down into the throat and pushing the food and help shoving it down. So that's some information if you ever have a pet frog and you see it eating and its eyes dis disappear momentarily, that's where it's going. Did you know that Antarctica is a desert? Yes, Antarctica is a desert. It's because of the precipitation or the lack of rainfall. That's what constitutes what a desert is, not the ice or the snow lying around in mass. And it's also one of the largest deserts on the planet. Interesting stuff, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard penguins can poop up to 40 times in a small fraction of time. Very interesting. Okay. You're doing good, by the way. We're going to be testing sounds next. Oh, <laughs> took the wrong thing. Okay. So, next... Very interesting factoid I have for you today. Did you know that in Jurassic Park or in any media you see a velociraptor? They're actually not velociraptors. Those are called Dionychus. Or, yeah, Dionychus. Something like that. Velociraptors are actually the size of small chickens with feathers. But because of the name and pronunciation of the relative to the velociraptors. That's why in Jurassic Park, we have overgrown vel velociraptors. So yeah, next time you see a velociraptor, that's not it. It's actually Dionychus. So if you actually got into a fight with a velociraptor, you'd probably win. Sound time. I want you to close your eyes. Don't cheat and don't peek. I'm watching you. Let me know what side you hear this on.
and you passed. Very good job, very good job indeed. I need to take some of my tools. Put them back in the back where they belong. And don't worry, I have some more factoids for you. more facts for you. I'm just checking a few things. Don't mind me. Okay, so the next fact is high heels were originally designed for men. Yes, the high heels you know and love. They were designed for men who rode horses, and in specific communities and groups for the most wealthy of men, they were used for fashion and to make them a bit taller. So yes, those were originally men's stuff. Interesting, right? sharing facts. I just love giving facts. So, around the time of the French Revolution, the majority of the language being spoken wasn't even French. Interesting, right? It was mostly regional languages, you know. So, whomever was in the area, wherever they habitat, or no, what was the word? They have, I can't think of the word, but wherever their habitat was, their region was, that's the language they spoke. It was very regional. It wasn't all French. Of course, a lot of it did have French in it, but the majority of people who spoke were not speaking French. It's very interesting. Because you'd think so, right? France, you know, par la française. Ah, tu comprends? Vous comprenez? Ah, ah. Si, si. Très bien, très bon. Vous allez bien? Ah, moi? Mm. Ah, C'est bon, ça va? Yeah. It's hard to figure out how I'm feeling these days, if I'm being honest. It's all iffy. But life goes on. So... I almost cut myself. So, we're going to be using this.
ああ、素晴らしい。私はアメリカ人です。どこはうんペンソがあここです。You know, our very obscure and unorthodox tests were completed. Now, what do I have for you to do now? Hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do? I have so many things here, but I don't know if I want to partake in them. Because they're very unorthodox tools. Such as this one right here that you've seen previously. This one here is a mini torch. And this is what I use to eradicate bugs. I'm just playing. This is what I use for my candles. Such as this one. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of my lab tests and procedures. And most importantly, thank you for listening and tuning in to all the random facts I have to share with you today. And just to listen and to hang out with me. I really do appreciate your time here and your company. And I hope you have a very nice night. And with that being said, take care.